Good morning everyone, my name is Faiza and I'll be touching up on programming and web development. Um, so I'll be developing a mini game um, and storing its data on the back end using Firebase. So and I'll be using HTML, JavaScript and CSS to, to create this entire game. So I'll be first demonstrating how this app actually works. So you enter in your name first. And then you can choose a difficulty level, could be easy, medium, or hard. I'll go with easy. So essentially what happens is here that we have stored uh, three colors in an array and we programmed, in programmed it to be shuffled at a particular time. Um, and uh, that is why the colors keep changing. If it's easy, it will be slower. And as we go uh, to medium or hard, it's going to get faster. So. Um, the game works like this. So when the color when the when the color gold pops up, we need to select the button with the text in color gold. So if it's black, it's going to be white in color gold. Oh, it's white. And if it's gold, it's going to be black in color gold. Black. And so that's how it essentially works. And gold will be black. So, so my score is five now, and I want to um, see my ranking on the leaderboard. So we click on this, and you can see a ranking. So my name is Faiza, and I have a score of five. But this leaderboard is not ordered now. It's not ranked in the correct order. So um, I need to refresh the page, and then click on this again, and you see that I am the winner, because I have a score of five, which is more than more than the other um, players who have played this game. This is how it essentially works, and um, I'll show you the database where we're storing all the data. This is the Firestore Fireways. Um, so we have uh, something called collections. I have created this, and then Billy, which is the other players, Tom, and my name, which is right there. By the that's how we store the the data. So I'll be showing you the code now. Um, we have four files uh, for this game. One is an HTML file, uh, one uh, CSS file, and uh, two JavaScript files. So the HTML file is basically, uh, it, it, it provides a structure for the entire app um, of this page. And it can be enhanced and modified with the help of the CSS file. So this CSS file is just for the presentation, formatting, and, um, and the layout. So it just adds color to your game. Then we have the two JavaScript file. Uh, one JavaScript file is for the functions of this, of this game. And the other one is to store the data, which is our name and the score, in the Firebase. Mm, so JavaScript, which is the first one here, it is used to control the behaviors of the different elements, which is already defined in the HTML file. So that's how it essentially works. Um, I will be uh, creating the entire project for you guys, and we'll be going step by step uh, to, to create this game. Um, so we need to save this file as as a game, and the extension will be HTML. We we'll first creating the HTML file. I'll be saving it onto game the desktop. Okay. This is the, these are the head tags.
So here uh, I just created the structure of the entire app. Um, we have the head tag, so um, HTML uh, elements of a website appear on the front end of the page as we can see here. And every web page is made up of a bunch of these HTML tags which you can see here, for example, these head, but, uh, body, um, button, and so on. So once the tag has been opened, all of the contents that follow is assumed to be a part of that tag until you close the tag. So the HTML tag is the first tag which we start with and needs to be closed at the bottom over here. And same thing with the head. So the head tag in our case uh, holds the link to the different files. So we have we have to create um, a CSS file and a JavaScript and two JavaScript files. So these script will hold them. And then the heading. So we have H1, H2, H3 to H6. So as you go down, the font gets smaller. So H1 means header one is the biggest of all. So we have the header one here and you enter your name with the H3 heading. And input is basically for the input field and it has an ID. So every element in your um, HTML file needs to have an ID as a type of text. So we only take in a text um, input uh, on, this, on this bar. So BR means um, uh, like to separate the files. Um, the lines is to create spaces between them and then we have the button um, HTML tags where we need to specify the ID again class value okay so here we have an on click on click means whenever you click on this button we will be having a um, function which is going to um, be uh, connect connected to this so we have a start game function and this is the actual text which will be displayed on the button. So um, over here, this is um, so this, there are two ways of doing of, of of connecting CSS with HTML. You can either do it in line, which is over here. We are already doing some CSS over here, so that's just why the color. I mean, not the color, the text of uh, of the current color is um, the font is kind of big so we have we have assigned the font size this, this can also be um, said in the CSS file but I'm just showing it here so you can do it both ways mm, and over here as well this this one has also been done with the your score text is also also has some CSS in this file itself mm, so these are all the IDs we need to have IDs for each and every element uh, to call them for styling or for any kind of functions that you want to add and even these buttons see the colors are not there they're very simple but we added CSS to make it to make the entire game work so now we'll be creating a new file And now see the difference. Completely changes it. So I'll be going brushing through the CSS file a little bit. Um, so this means the star means um, everything in the file. So everything in the entire page will have a margin, padding, and the font family for all the contents of this page will be will be as specified, and also everything will be text aligned to center. We have a background color, we have the in this input type text means we're referring to the input tag with a type of text, so only this one, yeah, only this. So we are calling that here and we're also assigning it some, some styling. Uh, the hashtag means uh, when we're calling an ID. So it could, could be either an ID or a class, but ID has to be a unique, class can be the same. So the ID here is uh, ID has to be called in a CSS file using a hashtag and class can be called using a um, dot. The so goal button for example, uh, here we see the classes. These are called here with a dot. So, um, and the color, the, the transition of this 
um, color when we click when we hover over it can also be added is also added here you can see that when we hover over the buttons which is the bid button the submit button or these level buttons we see that we get a very light grayish kind of a shade that's how it works um, so now I have added everything um, the buttons now this is something which we only see when we click on um, the score leaderboard this is for the leaderboard basically this table um, and th means the table heading um, tr is table row so inside the table row we have a table data which is which is going to be taken from the firebase mm, so now let's create the javascript files And we have called this um, JavaScript file over here in the HTML um, in the HTML file. Okay, so we have created the JavaScript file. We named it Game Functions, and we have to make sure that we um, connect it with uh, in the HTML file, and uh, it should be under inside the script uh, tags and the name has to be exactly the same um, so let me give an introduction of what exactly is JavaScript JavaScript is a programming is a programming language that lets a web developer design interactive websites and uh, most of the um, dynamic behavior you will see on a web page is uh, thanks to JavaScript so in our case um, the button functions and the clicks, everything, or uh, the functions behind them is all because of the JavaScript. Um, so well, let's uh, let's get into the JavaScript file. Um, we will be taking in some of the stuff from the previous file. Okay. So we added in um, the array, the colors array which consists of gold, white, and black. And we have the function start game, which takes in the parameter um, level. So we see that in the, in the uh, HTML file, we have each of these buttons, the, the difficulty level. When you click on them, the on click, each of them has an on click of start, uh, of start game and, and it passes in a value called easy, right? The parameter is easy. So um, let's, we have defined the function here as well. It's called uh, start game and we have passed in the value, uh, like a variable. So we initialize uh, the score variable to zero. So when we initialize something to, to a number, it's, it's automatically uh, taken as, uh, assumed as an as a integer value. And um, then we have um, the get, so, one way of connecting the HTML with uh, calling the elements of the HTML uh, file in the JavaScript file, we use something called get element by ID or get element by class. It could be anything, and I have used ID in, in this case. And we are calling um, that uh, we are calling the element demo, demo one using its ID. So it's very important to include um, IDs in your um, in your a, a, uh, HTML file. Okay, so and we're calling demo one in our in this case demo one. Demo one is basically the the color is changing. The color which will be changing here are, is demo one, and demo two is um, the scores which will be changing. So I have um, I have demo one in inside p p which is uh, paragraph and demo to in, uh, which is inside an input uh, input tag um, so basically uh, the the scores will be will be stored in an input um, input field 
Uh, so that is why we'll be using value for the input and inner HTML. So inner HTML is basically, um, it is used to insert uh, content to a, to a specified ID of an element. So we are, we are inserting the colors um, array here. Okay, and console.log is, um, is a function that writes a message to log on a debugging console. And uh, in a browser, you will not see anything on the screen. Uh, it logs a message to a debugging console, so not yours. You will not be able to see star anywhere on the front front end, front end page over here. It's just for us uh, if you have a bug or any um, errors. Okay, so now um, we have also um, connected these uh, buttons using its value. Uh, from here, the element by ID, these are the buttons, I think, yeah, this, these are the ones. So we have connected everything, now let's get into um, the, the rest of the function. So here we see that um, we have completed um, this function where we call the star game function. We pass in a parameter which is level as the value here, and if the value is uh, easy, we switch we switch between this value which we pass, right? So if it's easy, then we are going to execute these fun these this block of code. If it's medium, then we execute this block of code and hard and so on. So the switch case statement is a multi-way branch uh, statement. It provides an easy way to dispatch uh, to, uh, execution to different parts of um, the code based on the value of the expression. That is why we use a switch case and um, we see that in our HTML, it is to insert the content to a specified ID of an element. And we forgot a semicolon here. Um, we need to end every statement with semicolon. So here we are passing, uh, we are calling the function set interval, which has two parameters, which is randomized, which is another function which we are, which we have here as well. And this is basically the time, um, the time delay between each call. So obviously if it's more, then it's going to be slower. The time delay is less, it's going to be faster. So easy has the most time delay. And in the randomized, uh, in a randomized function, we call the shuffle function, which has a for loop. Uh, here we're basically shuffling between the, the, the area of three elements, uh, which is the three colors. Uh, we, we're going to check the length of the uh, array, and we're going to go one by one. Um, so what we're doing here is that we're going to have a function called random and uh, we're taking the lower and so uh, floor takes the lower integer and um, math dot uh, math dot random random will generate a number between uh, 0 to uh, 2 because we have 0 1 2 so three elements uh, and what we're doing here is that we're doing an exchange we're exchanging the now color from the array with the generated random value that we uh, that we uh, get from this um, var j. That's how we are just um, uh, switching the um, or randomizing the colors. Okay, now we in the next step. Let's check in the HTML file what we have left. What kind of functions? Okay, so 
these buttons, these these buttons, which we click in order to get the score. Uh, we have an on click for each of them and call, with a function called the game. And the game also has a parameter, uh, gold, white, black. So if we, uh, if the color which is displayed over here is, for example, gold, and um, the text also has to be, um, the text color also has to be gold. Yeah, so let's, let's, let's code that in as well now. Okay, so this is the game function. So over here, what we're doing is we're again um, storing score, which is um, a number value. Um, uh, in this variable, will be we get this variable from the value of this variable from uh, the HTML file by using get element by ID. The same thing. And even for color, we'll do the same thing at element by ID. We're going to check if the color of the array is same as the value which is passed. So if it's uh, gold and if the color of the array is also gold, if they're both gold, then we can do increase the score. Else we're going to increase mm. the score. And, and then we're going to display the score. So it, it's very simple. That's how it's simple if condition. Let's see if the pro, uh, game works now. Let's test it out. So let's go with easy. It's cold. Okay. Okay, so we have completed our JavaScript file for the game function. So we have the array, which have all, which has all the colors, and we have the function start game, which passes in a value, and this value will be changing and helping in the switch cases. So easy, medium, and hard, and each of these switch cases will have a different time as well as console log, which will uh, will will display the message in the console of the browser. Um, then we have the randomized function, which is also called in the switch cases. Um, then the shuffle array, and then obviously the game function, which will help to update the score. So now um, let's let's test it out on the browser. We're using Google Chrome, um, so we're going to inspect it first to check the console log messages. There will be one um, error. That's because we haven't connected the file to the Firebase yet. Uh, since on the HTML file, we have the Firebase um, uh, scripts uh, and also the table, which is for the leaderboard, um, uh, it's going to show some error. But let's ignore it for now. So let's start the game. Easy. We'll show that we have entered the start function. We have another console here for the start function. I'll just show it here. Here we have entered the start function and we have entered uh, the switch case for uh, easy. So if I show easy, if you click on medium, then it's going to be start medium and it's going to be uh, for hard, start hard. So basically we know that the color, the, the time is changing and we are sure of it. This is a way of a validation as well. Okay, so now we are, uh, now we will get into connecting to the Firebase. Uh, for that, we need to uh, go uh, um, go to the firebase.google.com website, and if you already have an account with Google, um, you can go to the console directly. If not, um, you have to create an account with Google uh, before you can start. Since I already have an account, I'll just start. Let me give you an overview of what exactly is Firebase. It's, it's a NoSQL no database hosted in the cloud by Google to store and sync any of the data from the client or server side. And we don't use uh, tables, or I'll just show it to you here. We don't usually use, this is the old one, we don't usually use tables or rows or columns. It's just um, 
our data here is split into um, a collection and then in collection we store um, documents and each of these documents will have a key value pair um, of, uh, which is in our case name and which is going to be a type of string and we also have score which is a type of number. This is how we store our um, our um, data in the Firebase and um, fire, we are actually using um, okay let's start my first project. Okay, so now we'll need to um, include the script tag in our um, code. And then we also need to include another script tag from since we'll be using Firebase Firestore. Um, so Firestore is another branch of uh, Firebase. It uh, it's like Firebase um, real time database, but it keeps your data in sync across client apps through real time listeners and offers offline support. This is the reason we're going to use Firebase um, Cloud Firestore since um, it, you're, you're, you're allowed to like build your, your apps um, that, work, uh, that work even without internet connection. That's the best thing. So now we need another uh, script for Firestore. These are just the libraries. Um, next, we need to create Okay, so now we'll be looking into the Firestore. We also need to copy this part. Okay, so we have added in all what was required, taken from the website. Now let's go to database make sure the rules are changed change it to true because we don't really have an authentication user here so we don't need to do this for a normal application but we're doing it for now just for testing purposes um, okay let's get into the code I'll be explaining you line by line um, of everything what's happening I already pasted the code here so we can go faster this way so we create here we're just creating an object called firebase a config which has all it needs to connect to a database all these um, information here and capturing the uh, and configuring the app on the front end to link with our firebase which you've created this was what it is doing that's all it's linking the front end and now we're creating a, a variable called app and we're initializing our firebase here this is the one and then um, our constant db this is what we store our firebase in a db variable here it's a constant actually and we get to we we and uh, to get reference from a database we need this and um, in the future when we want to interact with the database we use the db so like for example here and even later on here we use db to interact with the database and then we have some settings which needs to be um, uh, done as well so now um uh, 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 the references for uh, for the elements for the HTML file. This is what we do to refer, make reference for the HTML file. And for example, the query selector here, um, it really returns the first element from the document. 
um, that matches uh, the table. Uh, so, what we do, um, you know, in the other JS file, we used to use to get element by ID, get element by, um, and get element by uh, class. Here, we just use query selector and we um, pass in the ID of of what we want exactly. So, here we have a constant submit players and submit button. So, what is exactly a submit button? We have it in the HTML. Submit button ID is right here. So this is the submit button ID, which is this. This button is submit button, and we named it as we named it as uh, submit pairs. And then for name, which is going to be this uh, leaderboard. So now, what exactly is the leaderboard query selector? Uh, here we are passing in the ID of leaderboard. Leaderboard over here is inside the table. So we have a table, and we have a table heading. And then we have table row for each row. We'll be having the data, right? And these data are each players in our um, in our game. So the players will be uh, placed here. That is why we have an ID for the table data here. And uh, basically, we are we are calling it here so that we can um, place our players there. Okay. And then we have the score, which is a demo two. We have already defined that before. Okay. So now let's get into. Um, um, Store um, receiving the data. This is how we receive the data, and this is how we um, save save the data. So for receiving the data, uh, we want to first grab the data which we have stored in the players collection, right? Uh, so how do we store the data first? We use something called submit players. Submit players. Is some, we have already defined this as well, right? The this this button this button dot add event uh, listener and um, when this is clicked basically uh, we will check if the if the name is full there has to be some name in order for there to be another player right so the, this this um, uh, space has to be filled with the name if it's not filled with the name then uh, we will not be adding anything uh, in the, the database so if uh, the name uh, value um, is not equal to null, then we will do all this. Okay, so we DB, we're calling the instance of DB which we have created here, the Firebase, um, Firestore Firebase, uh, and collection as a reference of, um, okay, so we need to create um, the uh, collection beforehand. We call it players. And we this will be auto generated document ID and you're going to have a name and value this type of string and value for example I'll put as um, my name okay we also need to have another field which is called score and it's going to be type So now I'm going to display this in our app, right? How do we do it? We use, we start, we first start with this. So since we already created a, a collection called the players, uh, we, we only want to display our data from the database. We want it to be ordered. So um, the best thing about Firebase is that um, it has, uh, it provides a, a really powerful uh, query functionality for specifying which documents you want to retrieve from a collection. So yeah, and you can uh, you you can make use of database query from the front end itself. Um, that is why it's really easy. And use something called snapshot. Mm -hmm. Now, what exactly is snapshot? It's just representation of um, the data inside the inside the collection. So we're calling the snapshot uh, keyword, and um, we are also if there are any changes made to our database, we'll be updating it uh, instantly as well. So uh, we can access all of our different documents uh, from the snapshot in this collection, and um, by calling the doc changes is how we do it. Snapshot doc changes. Okay, and now uh, to cycle through each and every um, document, we'll be using uh, we'll be going to having a for each, and we'll be grabbing the changes made and seeing the document on it and grabbing the data as well. This is just how we are going to grab the data from the database and display it on our app. And we have something, another function called render players. So we will here, we have it here as well. So we're passing in a value, which is document, a doc. 
uh, we're passing the individual document in this function so we can render it. Uh, then we are creating some elements for displaying on the front end mm -hmm. and um, uh, TR means table row and uh, inside this table row we will be having the name and the score which are table data inside the row and we are setting the TR uh, to the document ID so I have mentioned and the data, data ID is the is just uh, the name attribute name so document ID, I've already mentioned it here. This is a document ID and it's a unique ID. So we're linking this document ID with um, with the, the table row. So each table row will be document ID. So each document ID is a player, right? There'll be many players like this. Uh, this is just the first one, then there'll be many. And uh, each of them is a row in our table. That is what I um, was thinking of. And then we'll be uh, adding, uh, appending means we're adding in the name and the score to the row. And uh, the leaderboard will be all in the leaderboard will be adding the row as well. So what is the leaderboard? You have already defined it here. The leaderboard is a part of the table. So yeah, here. So we'll be having all the players displaying there on the table. Okay. So now let's be done with this function with the render players. Now we'll be displaying the table, right? So this is that uh, the document get, al get element by id table dot style dot display equals block. That means when we click on the, the table has an id called table. So when we click on this, uh, so uh, the submit button also has an on click function display, and that's what we are actually mentioning over here. So uh, when we click on this, it's going to display the block of the table. That's what it's trying to say. Um, otherwise, it won't display. Yeah. Uh, now we have to save the data. We save the data with a click of a button and um, and we add the data name will be name value. We have already defined this over here and uh, the score will be score value. So we are adding the score value and this and this name value uh, to the table here. And don't forget to parse int. Um, because uh, the we, we need to change the string to um, into an integer because we need to uh, order them in a rank, right? It has to be a proper ranking and sort them in descending order. So we need to change it to numbers so that we can we identify that. Okay, so we have completed our JS functions for the Firestore and we have stored everything as well as um, retrieving everything. So we have done both ways, saving as well as retrieving the data and displaying the data. Now let's see it executing on the Google, on the, on the browser. Let's enter name. Okay, let's see it on the, on the leaderboard and it's right there. Uh, let's do another one. right there but it has to be on the top right because that's the highest score so we need to refresh and to click on this again so now it's ordered in the proper ranking so we check in inspect we had a few consoles there as well uh, I'll be showing you the console uh, on our app uh, on our code uh, for example over here we are consoling out the, the data which uh, we have added so right here we have three three players so we have three objects that's how it is and everything works perfectly now let's check the database whether it get updated there as well or not yep we have Timmy and Tom and my name so yeah everything works properly I hope you enjoyed our session and you benefited from this so we have touched up on HTML CSS JavaScript and as well as we have done some basic database options from Firestore Firebase. So thank you so much for um, staying through the session and um, have a nice day.